What's up guys? Welcome to the Stats Free Sports channel. Let's get right into it. No intro for this video. This narrative around Kirk Cousins being done dirty by my Falcons is kind of wild to me. Uh, you know, seeing the Kirk Cousins defenders, mainstream, and just regular people on social media, fellow Falcons fans, or also just NFL fans, that Kirk Cousins has been done wrong, he's been done dirty, we did, we made a bad pick with Penix. I don't understand none of that narrative. I don't understand, I don't get it. But let's get into it though, guys. Uh, Kirk Cousins, well, the rumor now about Kirk Cousins is he picked the Falcons over the Vikings, mainly because he didn't want to compete with a young quarterback like a Drake May, like a JJ, like a JJ McCarthy. He didn't want a true successor behind him. He wanted whatever the contract length was going to be, three or four years, with whatever team he wanted to be strictly him for the most part. And I don't understand that. This is a business. This is how life goes in the NFL. He should know this. Fans know this. So I, my, my confusion is why don't players know this? And, you know, and look, taking a, taking a step back, players are human. No matter how much money they have, fame, power, they're still human. They still have feelings. I understand it. But for me personally, sitting back, if me and him swap roles, I'm 36 with a torn Achilles, why would I not want my team, or why would I would it think it's logical for a team to pick a quarterback? I, I don't get it. And I don't, and for me personally, why would a team have to run it by me first anyways? I'm not, it is what it is. Kirk has made his money already, and he's going to make it with us too. He's guaranteed $100 million the first couple years. Like, I don't understand what holy thing he has with, with the Falcons. I, I don't get it. We don't have to run nothing by him. Uh, we don't have to discuss nothing with him first. We're paying you the money to go play. You don't. We don't. You're not the long term guy. You're not 24. You're 36. You're not 26. You're 36. And for me personally, as a lifelong Falcons fan, I never thought Kirk would be here long term. And I push for Kirk, but I never thought Kirk would be here for beyond two years. Watch. Look. Go back to my channel, if you subscribe or not. Go back to my channel. I started my Layatu Latu campaign for the Falcons in November, November 25th, 2023. I did a video that day saying the Falcons should target Layatu Latu in the NFL draft. That's my favorite player for us to get. We need to pass rush badly. I believe that from that day on, even to this day right now, recording this video, May 7th, that we needed pass rush very, very badly. We did not address that like, like I would like. I get us Falcons fans are upset about that. I gave my reaction to the Penix move, my reaction, and I said then, I wasn't, I was confused, but I wasn't mad because I understand that Kirk is 36 with Achilles injury, and I never thought he would be here. Even when he signed for his 100 million, I'm like, okay, there's an out probably after two or three years. I never thought Kirk would be the answer long term. I, I personally thought we would go lot to first round, maybe get a quarterback third or fourth round, but probably not. We, we got Tyler Heineke, probably get another backup quarterback because, like I said, Kirk come off an injury, and he's been kind of banged up throughout his career, especially the last five years. You want to get make sure you have two good quarterbacks behind Kirk. That was my opinion. Pick lot to with pick eight. Or trade back and get trade back and get him or Dallas Turner, and then we were going to go quarterback in 2025. Aisha Dua Sanders, Carson Beck, Drew Allen, whoever Quinn Ewers, whatever. That was my prediction of what would happen. Didn't work out that way, uh, but obviously we saw the news that the Falcons kind of saw it in my vision. They did want lie to over Turner, like I thought, because it made most sense. But they couldn't trade back and get him. The Jets, you no, know, the Jets draft uh, draft film came out. And they were saying the Falcons wanted to go back and get trade back up in the first to get uh, Latu, but it didn't pan out. So cool. But the fact that Penix to me was a bad pick because we signed Kirk doesn't make sense. Kirk was never set to do. Let me say this: most players in the league, especially when you're older, they aren't expected to do the full contract. I can give you eight million dollars, eight eight years for a trillion dollars. If there's an out in that contract after four or five years, I'm going to use that out, regardless if you're playing well or not, because it doesn't make sense long term. You know what I'm saying? So 
So put that on Kurt now. I never thought Kurt would be there long term. I would, like I said, my, my thinking was 2025 draft. He, the player, whoever it is, Shadur, Quinn Ewers, Drew Aller, Carson Beck, whoever it is, they sat, Jackson Dart, they sat for that 2025 year, and then they will start the 2026 year. That's, that's my thinking. Now, is that the smartest move? That's debatable, but that was, I, that was what I was happy with if the Falcons did that. Now, with Penix. He's older prospect, all that good stuff. What are we going to do with him? He's clearly going to be starting by 2026. No matter what happens with Kirk Cousins, I think it's a guarantee that Penix will be starting in 2026 as long as he's healthy and everything's going right with, with, with him. I think Kirk is out by 2026. So my thing is Kirk has to come with the mindset of Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to make you pay for it. I'm going to make you pay for it. With your wallets, obviously, because you're getting you're getting money, but make you pay for it by by changing the narrative, by keeping the narrative narrative what it is. I'm gonna prove to the fans, I'm gonna prove to you, and prove to the league that I'm better than Penix. I'm better than your future guy. The goal for Kirk Cousins is to play well enough to hold off Penix for the full contract. That's the goal for Kirk Cousins. Hold off Penix until his contract is done, all four years. That should be Kirk's mindset. That should be his thinking. And I really didn't love Kirk agent coming out. Obviously, it's from it's probably from Kirk. I would think that he came out draft night and like, oh, I don't understand. We didn't talk and da da da. And the next morning, he came out and said, oh, we, I'm cool with it. Congrats, Penix. Welcome to the team. Like, come on now. <laughs> Like if you, I know you. Like I said, I understand players have feelings, our egos. I get it. I love it. We're all humans, but just keep your thoughts to yourself. You don't gotta respond because people ask you how you feel. Just keep it, keep it in house. To me, that's what I thought about it. You know, you you ruin, you make a story when it comes out from your camp that you're not happy. Keep it, keep keep it p, keep it an adult. Be an adult about it. Put your big boy pants on. You're getting paid a hundred million dollars. Ball out. Go ball out. Make the team re- re- regret wasting a pick on Penix. Make Penix wait four years. That's the goal. But like I said, for me, I never thought he would play the full contract. My thinking was Kirk plays two at most three, and then the last year he would be going. Or like I said, or maybe even after the second year, going to the third year, Kirk would be moved on from. I never really thought Kurt would be here four years. So it was like, okay, he got a four-year deal, but what what older player normally plays the full contract? None. Not really. <laughs> you know, so it was like that 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 to me, that arrogance to me from Kurt Cousins defenders to me is kinda wild. You know, like I said, Rich Eisen, you know, respect to him, but it's like, okay, you're going he going on multiple Multiple discussions on the on Kirk Cousins being done dirty. What has Kirk done? He hasn't done anything. He has no NFC title belts under under his uh, wing. He has no championship belts. He has nothing. He has he has good play. That's it. Good. He has good play, but not in good. But not in big time moments. Not really. He has a couple of big time moments, but other than that, when the lights get bright. Kirk is known, at least the narrative around him is he's known to fumble the, fumble the ball, sometimes literally. You know, so it's like I don't get what like I said. I'm not trying to put Kirk down because not a hit piece on Kirk, not a diss to Kirk, but it's like okay, we brought you in to be an upgrade. You are that as long as you're healthy, cool. Penix should not see. And look, look, as I said before, in my draft coverage, I don't think most quarterbacks in this draft class should see the field except Caleb Williams. Most of them shouldn't, and I've been steady on that. Even Drake May, Drake May with the Patriots, let 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 Brissett cook for a year. That's what he's there for. Uh, JJ McCarthy now with the Vikings, let Darnold cook for a year. That's what he's there for. You know, so I never really Penix. Obviously, Kirk Cousins is there. Let him cook. Let Penix cook for two years because his scheme wasn't the most NFL scheme, NFL ready scheme in Washington the last couple of years. It was good for him. You know, he put up good numbers, made big plays, all that stuff. But 
is not really good for the NFL. So let him learn for two years under Zach Robinson and the whole offensive staff, and then we'll see what he has, you know, by year three. But the arm talent is definitely there. So, as I said before, I don't I don't agree with picking Penix, but I'm not mad at it. And it's like, you know, people got to just get over it now. I think people still talking about it so much because the news cycle is so slow. <laughs> I, I truly do. Because it's like, this is not a big topic anymore. Like, the fan, the Falcons fans should be over it. The draft was 100 years ago now. Like, it's done, it's done. It was done, it's done. It's not fresh. It's like, that was a week or two ago now. Like, I'm kind of over it now, but people are still harping on the fact that we got Kirk and still got Penix and what's going to... There's no competition. There should be... Look, it should be known from the get-go that Penix will not even... Don't have him even suit up. Like, you're not even thinking about playing unless Kirk get hurt. Then, obviously, the next game you might play. But Penix not even in conversation. Just learn. Sit back, learn to be a pro... Learn to be a man with millions of dollars now. Like, I'm not really one pins to even suit up for, for me personally. But that's just me. We'll see how everything goes, man. But I really am getting tired of the Kirk Cousin defenders and, you know, and, and, and saying we done them wrong. We didn't do them wrong. It's the business. Put, put your big boy pants on. Put your $100 million in the bank that we're giving you. And go play and ball out. And then, you know, push Penix back for the extra two years. If you can do that, then you 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 have spited the hand that fed you. <laughs> you know you've you definitely uh, you know gonna have have to make a tough decision on okay, Kirk's still balling, he's playing better than ever now. What do we do with Pennies? What do we do with Kirk Cousins? Do we extend them even more? Do we do we look even crazier and cut Kirk while he's playing amazing and then make Pennies play? But we can't do that because no. Kirk is balling out. So, like I said, you have a good you have a good good dilemma. But as I said, no matter what Kirk does, in my opinion, at least by year three, because uh, you got to have to pay Drake London, B. John Pitts, all these guys long term. You know, or at least that's the goal. AJ Terrell, you can't have a high paid quarterback like that. But like I said, most of Kirk's money, Kirk's money is coming uh, early on in the contract anyway. So we'll see. We'll see where everything goes, guys. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm all I'm all for the Penix era coming soon. But Kirk era is definitely now, no question about it. I don't think it's even close that Penix will even uh, be a threat to Kirk. So he should be fine. As long as he stays healthy, Kirk should fend off Penix for at least two years. And then we'll see in 2026 what happens there. But that's it for the video, guys. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys next time.